Mao Zedong also pronounced Mao Zedong was the most poignant Chinese leader in history. His ruthless approach to establishing his brand of communism saw maybe 20 million people or further killed from the 1920s to 1940s during Dirth's civil war and persecution. From 1958 to 1969 alone, it's estimated that over 70 million people were tortured, executed, placed in gulags, or designedly starved to death under the great communist leader Chairman Mao. Why did he follow a path that was so tone destructive for his country? What's his heritage as a leader and communist icon? What do we see being in China moment that may harken back to the dark periods of Mao's reign of terror? Mao Zedong was born on 26th of December 1893 in Shaoshan village, Hunan province, the son of a fat peasant planter, Mao Yi Chang, and he and his two sisters, Zemin and Zetan, had a comparatively excellent education. At age eight, Mao was transferred to Shaoshan Primary School. In 1911, Mao began middle school in Changsha and at 16 attended the Advanced Primary Academy near Dongshan Province, which was a high academy. Mao also became a Buddhist like his mama Wen Qimei, but latterly became a devoted follower of communism and Leninist Marxist training from his early days. During this time, revolutionary winds were formerly blowing against Emperor Puyi and the Manchu dynasty as Sun Yat-sen, an American educated Christian led the Tung Menghui Society, seeking for a democratic form of government, which Mao supported. Mao and numerous others felt that the monarchy was authoritarian and didn't watch about the people. They banded with the European powers and the Japanese who enthralled Chinese soil, hence the rebellion from numerous sectors of society. As a result of the mass movement by several political coalitions, their monarchy was abolished, creating the Republic of China. But as a consolation, the monarchist Yuan Shikai became chairman. As a boy, Mao was veritably well-read and fascinated by history, and he was inspired by military leaders and their juggernauts. He studied Napoleon Bonaparte, George Washington, and American Civil War generals, as well as the art of war by Sun Tzu. He saw that these men plotted and fought for what they believed in, whether to produce a new nation or fight to save one in fermentation, which inspired him. By the time he entered Peking University, he'd studied politics and gospel, similar to Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations and Montesquieu's The Spirit of the Laws, as well as the workshop of Western scientists and proponents. Mao believed that centralized government control would be better for the people than a free request that created competition, where the workers were at a disadvantage and disposable to those who controlled assiduity. He also studied men similar to Charles Darwin, Immanuel Kant, John Locke, John Stuart Mill, and other influential thinkers. It's known that he kept a dupe of Nicola Machiavelli's The Prince and the Dialogues as a reference companion. Mao also studied the American service juggernauts in the West during the Indian Wars, as he saw the recalcitrant nature of the American Indian lines as inspiring. These may have told his mindset, as he later became a light army and guerrilla leader. Mao, like utmost Chinese, was veritably worried that Japan had been given Germany's former colony in China, verified in the Treaty of Versailles as Japan had been a member of the abettors in World War I. Uneasiness was rising in the country at Japan's partial occupation, which began in 1919. After scale Mao began tutoring history at the Xuye Primary School and was necessary in organizing demurs against the pro-Duan governor of Hunan province, Zhang Jinyao, who earned the surname Zhang the Poisonous due to his loose government and violent rule against heretics. Mao also dealt deeply with the jottings of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, keeping a dupe of the Communist Manifesto. This would later come from his Bible as he developed his studies and doctrines. He forcefully believed in the conception of universal wealth and land distribution, so that no one would be fat at the expense of others who would be left in poverty. His military strategies, political programs, and propositions are inclusively known as Maoism. Mao was also told by one of his old preceptors, Yi Peiji, a revolutionary and member of the Kuomintang, or KMT, which Mao joined. The KMT wanted a China free of Japanese influence and occupation and modeled on the Western commercial paradigm with free requests, industrialization, and free trade. The fat cop proprietors were the primary members of the KMT, which Mao set up to be anathema 
to his communist generalities of participated land and participated wealth. This division would be the catalyst for the break between the two coalitions. When party leader Sun Yat-sen failed in May 1925, he was succeeded by Chiang Kai-shek, who moved to distance the KMT chauvinists from Mao's socialists. Mao had originally supported Chiang's National Revolutionary Army, which he saw as an eventuality against the Japanese as Chiang launched the Northern Passage attack on the warlords in 1926, which Mao had also been fighting. Prodded on by this passage, numerous peasants supported Mao and rose and sequestered the land of the fat cop proprietors who supported the KMT and who were frequently killed. This conduct further alienated the KMT chauvinists from the socialists. Numerous KMT members were cop proprietors and weren't on board with communist land division. In 1927, Mao supported the communist separation from the plutocrat-acquainted KMT and he moved to have Chiang removed from power. Mao supported the death penalty or life imprisonment for anyone set up shamefaced of counter-revolutionary exertion, similar to defying land division, arguing that, in a revolutionary situation, peaceful styles cannot serve. This land confiscation and division disaster eventually disassociated relations. During the Chinese Civil War between the KMT and the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, Mao innovated the Chinese Workers and Peasants Red Army. In 1927, Chiang marched on the communist fort of Shanghai and unleashed the Herbage Gang, a notorious felonious association that boggled at will, killing up to 25,000 pro-communist Chinese. This was when the Red Army was created and Mao became an important commander. Mao believed that, indeed, the lame, the deaf, and the eyeless could all come in useful for the revolutionary struggle. And he increased the army's figures. Mao had openly called Chiang a puppet of the imperialists and a slave to the plutocrats and ingrained him as an anti-revolutionary, which was a correct assessment. He incorporated two groups of bandits into his army, numbering a fresh one, 800 dog faces. He'd laid down rules for his dog faces, prompt obedience to orders. All confiscations were to be turned over to the government and nothing was to be sequestered from poorer peasants. In doing so, he created a veritably well-chastened and effective fighting force. Mao joined forces with two leaders, General Zhu Dei and Lin Bialo, whose armies had nearly been wiped out, but Zhu and Mao dissented on the strategy they should take. Stalin had taken a great interest and supported Mao and called Zhu to Moscow in 1929, leaving Mao in charge. Part of what helped form Mao's abomination for anything non-communist was when in November his alternate woman Yang Kaiyui and his family were captured and guillotined by KMT General He Jian. Some believe it was ordered by Chiang. During the Japanese occupation of China in the 1930s, Mao's socialists were far more effective and dependable in fighting the Japanese forces than the nationalist Kuomintang army under Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek. Mao led the Red Army of the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, the forerunner of the People's Liberation Army to shirk the pursuit of the National Army of the Chinese Nationalist Party, the Kuomintang. The long march by Mao to escape the chauvinists under Chiang lasted from 1934 to 1935 and reportedly covered over five, six hundred long hauls in just over 13 months. The march was ill-conceived and not well allowed out. It started with about 100,000 people, but fewer than 8,000 arrived at the end through death from hunger, combat, and exposure. While on the long march, Mao's woman, He Zizin had been injured by a shrapnel crack to the head. She traveled to Moscow for medical treatment, and Mao progressed to divorce her and marry an actress, Zhang Qing. Zizin was thrown into a Russian insane shelter. After the massive Japanese eruption of the rest of China in 1937, Mao's forces worked as guerrilla units operating in small units and using mega hit and run tactics, unlike the Chinese chauvinists who latterly fought as a conventional force alongside American and British Commonwealth forces. Mao knew that without the KMT, he'd not be able to master the Japanese, so he transferred a peace immolation for an alliance with Chiang, who originally refused. But after Chiang was detained by his own KMT leadership, there was the confirmation of the United Front, which Stalin explosively championed. This alliance was a smart move, 
because after the destruction of Shanghai and Nanking by the Japanese, the figures within the army soared beyond 400,000 dogfaces, and their counter-offensive killed over 20,000 Japanese dogfaces. Once World War II came globally in 1939, and Japan began to foray into all of Asia and the Southwest Pacific, Allied commanders knew that Chiang viewed the socialists as a lesser trouble than the Japanese. Mao Zedong's legacy remains contentious, marked by colossal human suffering and drastic socio-political changes. His reign saw millions perish due to policies like the Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution. While some credit him with China's progress, his regime's ruthlessness and casualties define his tumultuous, polarizing heritage.